we're gonna cover some Firebase authentication. Now I've set it all up, so this time instead of actually typing through, typing out all the code and whatever, I've got, the, I've got a web page set up already, I've got all the auth, everything done. So we're just gonna review it, see how it looks. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and I don't think we need to waste any time just typing. You can literally copy and paste most of these functions straight out of the docs and they'll work right away. So, first, authentication. You gotta go here to your, your auth tab, go to your sign in methods. You've got email, password, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, anonymous. Enable the ones you want. I always go with email and password at a minimum and then usually I'll add in Google and sometimes Facebook. I'm, I don't usually use Twitter or GitHub, but hey, you can use all of them if you like. Okay. Pretty straightforward to enable. Just click the enable button there. Um, with the Facebook one, I don't want to hit it because there may be some secret keys behind this, but uh, you need to get your S your API keys from Facebook to do this with, through Facebook Developer uh, Developer uh, Portal. Uh, Twitter and GitHub are the same. Anonymous it lets you sort of handle um, almost like sessions because. If, the, if you don't have a logged-in user, you can automatically log them in as an anonymous user, and you get like a U, you get a UID that you can hand you can use, and you can attach that to l other users later on, and it kind of acts a bit like a session. I don't really like using it, so I don't I don't use it myself. Um, but if you've got an, a cert, if you want to read the docs and figure it out, anonymous may be useful. Okay, so you got to enable everything first. Enable what you want, and a minimum email and password, and usually Google. Okay, so get it enabled. Hop back here to your users tab. No users yet. All right, next, write yourself a form. You need to have an email, you need a password uh, for that, or sign with Google. All right, so this is my form. I've got some Firebase. This is all very standard Firebase for web. Again, copy pasted right out of the, right out of my, uh, my console. There's some config, some config hints in your console you can use and just copy paste it right out. Okay, and then I've got some Polymer, it's just HTML, then I've got my functions. Okay, when I click the sign in button, the sign in function will get called, register, register, sign in with Google, sign in with Google, and sign out. All right, so these are all pretty straightforward. There's only one thing here that I really need to cover first, which is the best part of this whole system. Okay, so when I log in, sign in, register, sign in with Google, I don't have to handle success states with Firebase because I've got this fun listener. It's called the on auth state changed. So Firebase dot auth to get the uh, to get the the auth API and then dot on auth state changed. You pass in a callback function that takes a user object. Okay. Every time I hit this page, this is gonna this is gonna imme it'll immediately try to log me in. It holds login credentials in well tokens. You they won't store your email and password in local storage. It'll store tokens for your session in local storage and it'll try to refresh the session every time you hit the page with your browser. In this case, I don't have a live session. I don't have a live um, authentication. So, it user is null. Okay, that's great. It's really easy. You can handle all your auth in one function, one callback function right here. All your success for your sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with email password, doesn't matter, your registration, all those successes can be handled right here in on auth state changed. So this little, I guess it's four lines, I kinda I logged it out. It could be a three liner, it could be a one liner, whatever. It's pretty easy to handle. Okay, and oh, you sign out. This is how you sign out. That's it. There's no more to it than that, so let's not waste any more time. Sign out, okay. Now let's hop up here to signing in. So let's try to sign in with chris at quiver.is. Let's try to sign in. Oh, user not found. Okay, let's try to register. Try to register. Actually, first let's sign in with Google. I don't need to register for Google. I can just sign in. Okay, here's how the function will work. I call the Google auth provider. Okay, and I add scopes. Scopes are strings. There are a couple of really common ones, just profile and email, that I really add to everything. But there are all sorts of fun Google OAuth scopes. So Google OAuth scopes. So I can pass in this string. Well, that's an ugly string. That doesn't work because the browser's too compressed. 
so I can get access to their ad exchange buyer API by saying, hey, provider .add scope. Yeah, it's long and it's a URL. Looks like a URL, but it's really just a string. So you just pass the string in and you get the scope. So some of the scopes are just one word. Some of the scopes are these URLs, looking strings, doesn't matter. Just pass in the string, you get the scope. And because this is your full regular Google authentication, this provider is the Google auth provider, but from the Google identity platform as viewed in this handy dandy little documentation, you get access to everything you can do. So you can do all your ad exchange buyer API two functions if you add that scope. And Facebook's the same way, Twitter's the same way, GitHub too. You get that provider, you get all their, all their functionality through that provider. I'm not gonna waste my time with their ad exchange buyer API. So let's just close that. But you can see, you can get fancy with it if you need to. Okay. So right now, we still don't have any users. Okay. So I sign, I then sign in, I call sign in with pop-up. I think you can also do sign in with redirect, but I like pop-ups. Sign in with pop-up and pass the provider in. That's it. And you can catch an error if you need to, or just rely on your, on your on-off state changed handler to catch the success. So sign in with Google, ready for this? It's magical, I click the button, It'll call sign in with pop-up, pass in the provider. I get a pop-up. That was it. I didn't have to write any other code to open the pop-up. I sign in. Oh, let's, you know what? Let's, let's skip that. Let's try it again. I don't want to sign in with that account. I signed in with the wrong account. Canceled the pop-up, the pop-up request. There we go. And we get our user. See? The user logged out, and that was this line right here that logged it out. All right, so magic. This is all I need to do to handle my sign in with Google. Create a provider, add any scopes that I want, call dot sign in with, with pop up, pass the provider in. On my honest off state change listener, we'll just get the user and handle it. Okay, so now about the user object. It's got a bunch of baloney here you don't need to worry about. This is all specific stuff for Firebase. It's got a display name, whatever. I mean, I asked for email and profile here on my provider. So I got a display name, I got an email, I got a photo URL. I mean, this is my, my beautiful mug. This is my beautiful mug, come on. Yeah, there it goes. There I am. And no shortage of terrible notifications. Thank you, OSX. Okay. Oh. Let's check and see, is there any more fun stuff here on the user that we wanna see? Email password, is the email verified? Yes, it's a verified email. So that you know that this email is me. Um, photo URL, there's some provider data. There's a refresh token. If you need to refresh it, there's some way to refresh. I don't ever use that. And here's the, the bell of the ball is the UID. This is the part that you really want. The UID is your unique identifier for this user every time you log in. If I refresh the page, do, 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 it'll log me in again, and guess what? My UID is identical. So now I've got this UID, I can then save data in my real-time database with this UID as the key. And I can always get to my, my user data in the real-time database because I've always got this UID whenever I'm logged in. And if I don't have a user, I don't have a UID, I don't have any data from my real-time database, I don't display it to my user, okay. Now, let's register. Now, I want to really quickly cover this registration. This is actually, okay, sign in. Okay, let's call it, look at the sign in. Sign in first. Sign in with email password, pass in the email and password. You can handle errors. That is it. Really not worth covering in any more depth than that because it's just a one-liner. Sign in with email and password. And you can look at the docs if you forget it. And you can copy and paste it out of the docs if you need to because that's literally what I did right here. I copied and pasted this block out of the docs. Okay, the registration here is the only interesting part of this whole app really, the only part that is, has any complication because you'll see right now when I go to register, watch what happens. Register. Oh, 
Okay, did you see what happened? Let's, let's close this. A register error. Auth email already in use, okay? So register error, auth email, the, the code, error.code is auth email already in use. If the email is already in use, I'm going to do what's called a linkage, a, an account linkage. Okay. To do that, I need a credential. Every auth provider has a different way of getting you a credential. It's firebase.auth.emailauthprovider.credential to get an email password credential. In this case, I only have signing with Google and email password. So if the auth is, if it's already been there, if it's already, uh, email's already in use, I'm just gonna automatically link. If you had multiple ways, multiple different providers you could potentially link, like maybe you wanna link Google, maybe you wanna link Facebook, maybe Twitter, then you'd wanna actually do another pop-up and ask the user, which one do you wanna link with? Do you wanna link with an existing Google account, Facebook account, or Twitter account? But in this case, because I really just have the Google account, I'm, I just, I will automatically, because the email has already been used, I will just automatically do the linkage. So I have the email and password already. So I use, I create a credential for this email and password. So now I've got this credential object. And now I've got to call app.signin with Google. That will run this block of code down here again. Now why do I need to do that? I need to do that because this is a very uh, security sensitive step. And Firebase will not let me link an account unless I've recently signed in with that account and like signed in recently within like within seconds. Um, I don't know, maybe there, maybe minutes. I've, I've never tried. I've always just signed in immediately with them um, because if you don't, you tend to get errors and it'll say you haven't, the error will read something like you haven't signed in recently enough, sign in again to link accounts. So I will just say, I will just sign in with Google again immediately, handle the success with the dot then, and then call firebase.auth current, dot current user dot link and pass the credential in. That's it, and that links the users together. So, you come over here to the console, you'll see I've got, let's refresh this. Ooh, I already did a linkage. Ha, let's, let's delete this so we can see the, see the steps as they, as they flow. So first we'll sign in with Google to create a Google account because I just deleted one. There we go. And we got a Google account. Okay, great. Now I'm going to try to register. And you'll see that it pops up my sign in with Google. It does the whole sign in process again. I sign in with that same email address and it will then link the users. Account linking success. And there's my, there's my user. Check that out. You'll notice, so the account link success fa uh, fired, the on off state changed, also fired. And you'll notice I have this awesome AWZ UID. Let's refresh this. Oh, let's refresh the page. I think it, I may need, may need to refresh the page to make this work. Come on. Come on, dashboard, you got this. Yeah, so it shows both both of the, uh, you can see I got both providers all under the exact same UID. So every time I log in with either, I'll get the same UID. I mean, that that's better than Firebase 2.0. Firebase 2.0, you had to handle all this manually, but Firebase 3.0, the new Firebase, lets you do this account linkage, which is so slick. So, what am I missing? I mean, this is pretty straightforward so far. I create, um, the account linkage is the only real, real uh, trick. You have to handle an error where you've already, already linked. I've got my account link success. Now what happens if I try to register again? Uh, email already in use. Yeah, so my, I haven't really handled this correctly and it's gonna try to link it again. And I try to link again, it's already been linked, but I'm gonna try to link again, it'll show, hey, provider already linked. So, yeah. And the only real deviation this has from production is in production, I would, I would message the user and say, hey, would you like to link accounts? In this case, I'm doing it just automatically because, I don't know, it's a demo. All right, only one more thing I wanna cover, and that is how to get 
what are known as user tokens. So check out this line right here. This will log your token out. Let's look at that line again. So I'm getting my app.user, which is the same user you get in all these callbacks. It's the exact, I mean, app.user is, it's this guy. It's my on off state change user. It's my user object. So I could, I mean, it's this guy. The one we've been looking at this whole time. Okay. I call dot get token as a function off of that user object. And then that returns a promise. I catch the promise. I respond to the successful promise and I get a token in my callback. That token, this guy right here, this will let me impersonate the user on my server. I can then pass this to my server or I can impersonate the user with the REST API. I can make, I can basically, it lets me impersonate the user, log in as, or act as the user, um, authenticate as the user. So yeah, that's all there really is to auth. The docs, of course, are fantastic. Read the docs if you have any, any more questions about that or ask me in the comments and I'll be happy to do my best to, to answer them and maybe even shoot another video. So thanks for tuning in and I will be back with more.